I work with voiceover people every day of my life, and so I hear a lot of demos. Some are great, some others not so much. This time on Studio takes the 10 most common mistakes people make in voiceover demos. Three, two, one. Studio takes real help for the aspiring voiceover artist. I'm Dane Scott from thegigdoctor.com, Fiverr top rated seller and voiceover coach, and we're turning our sights over onto demos this time. And I'm not going to drill down into a whole lot of specifics, but I'm just going to talk generally about the places where demos tend to fall off the rails. And in each case, what I recommend instead. And at the end today, I'm going to show you how you can not only get a free course and a free book, you'll also have a back door that I'll sneak you in early on for a half price deal on getting your audio demo turned into a video demo for under $40. Please like and subscribe here, smack the bell so I can keep these goodies coming your way. And if you can see how today's info is helpful, please do leave a comment too by the time we're done. So today, 10 things to avoid when you're creating a demo or when you're having one created. Not necessarily in the order of uh, worstness, worstitude, worstivity, I don't know. But I'm going to save the worst common problem until the last. That's the mistake nobody should ever allow themselves to make in this day and age. Let's start with number 10, bad production. Now, I know you're already expecting some self-serving advice here that says, you know, you should always hire a Dane or a Bill DeWeese or a Don Barnes or somebody to produce your voiceover demo, but I'm not going to say that because I don't believe that's necessarily true, especially if you're early in the process and you don't have a lot of budget. But I will say this, that if you're going to produce your own demo, you need to have at least moderate skills at doing audio production. Some signs of bad production are uneven levels, bad edits, and mistakes in how cuts transition from one to the next. Voiceover demo production isn't a good DIY job for somebody who is just starting out. The good news is that it doesn't have to cost thousands of dollars either. You don't have to hire it out to a really high-end person. Uh, there are people like me who will do it for just a few hundred uh, and will get you a perfectly good starter demo. So, you know, shop around on that if you're not feeling comfortable about doing it yourself. But don't expect that you're going to have to spend thousands on that. But don't do it yourself if you just don't have the skills yet. Number nine, acoustical problems. Until you've solved issues with room acoustics, you're not really in a position to be able to do a credible demo. You'll hear people talk about software that can eliminate room echo, for example, but anything like that is going to affect more than just the target problem. You will impact the sound of your voice as well. Your recordings need to be free of distracting reverberation. That's absolutely the case, and there are only really two effective ways to handle that. One is to adjust the room or move to another location. And the other is to use a different kind of mic, and in some cases, both. Home voiceover people often will choose to go with a more directional mic, like a shotgun mic, if they're having problems with room acoustics. Uh, but again, the best solution isn't to hide the problem or to use software to put a Band-Aid on it, but to actually address it. And in several of my other YouTube videos, I talk about ways to address this without having to you know, go the ultimate extreme of building a booth. As you can see here from my own background image, I don't use a booth here, so I'm living proof that it can be done. But whatever you do, get that problem solved first and foremost. Number eight is lack of variety. A typical voiceover demo is close to a minute long, and if it's all done in one style, it kind of wastes the client's time. But when we first start out, that's not always a problem we can completely address because we're still finding the styles we can do with our voices. We don't have that many, uh, that much variety yet. My advice is first, find your most comfortable, natural style, and then build it out from there. But whatever the styles are, you should try to have at least three distinct ones in your demo. Even if that's just you speaking normal energy, you speaking soft, low key, and you speaking with high energy and excitement. The real you is often the best voiceover that you can offer anyway. So maybe just three different energy levels. Uh, number seven, clips that are too long or too short. The next one is one of the most common errors I hear in demos. There are clips that are way too long or there are clips that are way too short or a combination of both. Here's the way you can think about it. Think about a favorite dessert. For me, that would be a turtle sundae. Now, when I dip a spoon into a turtle sundae, 
I'm going to know what it tastes like before I've even swallowed my first mouthful. If I have any doubt, that second spoonful is going to be enough for me to be sure. Well, it's the same with voiceovers. A sentence or two is plenty of time to know what a voiceover style sounds like. If you have more than that, you're basically just making them eat more of the same dessert. So my suggestion is no more than two sentences or about eight to 10 seconds max per clip. The flip side of that are clips that are no more than just a few seconds long. Now, the, in this case, the dessert hasn't even reached the back of their tongue yet before you've moved on to the next thing. That's not enough time to taste it. So if you keep those rules in mind, you'll be exactly in the right place. One or two sentences, total of eight to 10 seconds, and that's it, you're moving on. Number six, including things you're not that good at. Another thing I hear are styles that the person just isn't good at yet. They may think they are, but that's the problem that you run into when you're a lone wolf. You think that you can figure it out all on your own and you consider yourself the best judge of what is and isn't something that you can do well. Well, granted now, there, okay, there are people who are better at judging that than others. But most people starting out would really benefit from at least one solid reality check session with a voiceover pro, a coach, so that they have some perspective on where their strengths really are and where they should improve before they try to offer a style for public consumption. So don't hesitate to get some feedback, especially at first. It'll help you get off to a much better start, and it'll assure that your first and your succeeding demos represent the very best, most useful vocal styles you're capable of. That takes us to number five, unmarketable styles. That leads me to a problem of offering voiceover styles that few people are actually going to be interested in. Now, you might be able to do a great imitation of some actor that not that many people have heard of. Well, that's not going to make you real marketable, and neither is some zany style or some unusual accent. My advice is to make your main general demo as meat and potatoes in styles as you can. Go for the styles that are high demand. The more of that that you can cover in your gig, the better off you'll be. But just keep it in mind. And again, a voiceover coach can help steer you in the most marketable directions for the styles to develop first. Number four, misrepresenting what they can do as voiceover people. I once heard a guy say that he could speak four languages, and to prove it, he said yes in English, Spanish, French, and German. Of course, you know, if somebody had asked him to read a poem in one of those languages, he would have had to turn them down because all he, unless the poem was just yes, 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 over and over again, we, 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 we. Or someone claims they can do a French accent and they say, ho, 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 of course. But if they were presented with the actual role of an English-speaking Frenchman in a drama, they'd never be able to pull it off convincingly. By the same token, you or I might be able to pull off a line or so in a special delivery style, maybe with the help of a coach who's sitting in while you're recording it. And, you know, put that into your demo and maybe it would sound pretty good. But if we were ever asked to do that for real, we'd have a panic attack. So don't make the mistake of putting half-baked, undeveloped, or underdeveloped styles into your demo because that's a great way to back yourself into a corner with a client. Number three is over-processing. And this is kind of the same thing as, you know, rep misrepresenting yourself. Because, well, let me start with this. Personally, I'm a great believer in delivering my voiceovers raw. That means no audible processing whatsoever. I just chose a mic that happens to love my voice, made sure that my room is good acoustically, and so there we go. What the computer records is what the client gets. For that reason, I don't do noticeable processing to my voice on my voiceover demos either. I want the clients to hear what they're going to get when they order from me. So I deliver the lovely model without makeup. That's just the raw voice. And I leave it up to the client to apply whatever makeup they see fit. That would be the processing. Number two, demos that are too long. Next, we'll talk about the demo length. Fiverr gives us at least 90 seconds for an audio demo and 75 seconds if the demo also has video. And that's plenty long. In fact, I'd say 75 seconds is about the max that I'd recommend for any demo, except maybe something more specialized like an audiobook demo. All the rest of the time, I feel like I've given them a belly full of ice cream by the time we reach the minute 15 mark. And now here's number one, the one I've saved till the last because I want it to really resonate, and that's bad clip order. Probably the worst mistake we can make is to lead our demo with the wrong clip. 
What people need to realize nowadays is that the wrong clip can basically take us out of the running altogether because most potential clients have already made up their minds about us before they even swallow that first spoonful of ice cream. If that first clip isn't your absolute best style and one that's been chosen for its general appeal, a style that's commonly needed, we've already blown it. That's especially true now on Fiverr where buyers can skim across the thumbnails and listen to just a few scant seconds of each person before they move on to the next. What I'd suggest is, if you're absolutely determined to make your own demo, at least get feedback from others in the industry about which clip they consider of yours to be the very best, and consider that advice then when you're arranging the orders in your clip, but the very best one first. I have a free Facebook page called Rate My VoiceOver that you can head over to and, and you can post your clips there and get some feedback. And let me give you a bonus 11th item here. Audio only demo. I think that's a mistake. There are places where an audio only demo is fine and even it's just required. That's what you have to have. But on Fiverr, an audio only demo is a guarantee of less work. Why? because people these days don't care to sit still and stare at a gig image for 60 seconds. The more changing imagery and interest your demo can present, the longer they'll stay with you. Why is that important? Because the longer they stay with you, the more variety of styles they'll hear from you. And the more styles they hear from you, the better the chances that they're actually going to order from you when they hear a style that just keys into what they're looking for. Fiverr actually says straight out that a video demo causes 40% more buyer engagement than a demo without video. So if you're audio only so far, even if the audio demo is great, consider turning it into a video. And you know, before you throw in the towel on that idea, because you're not a video producer yourself and maybe you don't feel that you have the budget, there are websites where you can hire this done for about $375. They'll take the audio and choose a great video clip to go with it and it's job done. I kind of hate the idea though of people having to spend even that much. So I created a Fiverr gig where I'm doing it for $75. And since the gig is brand new now, just put it up and I want to promote the heck out of it to get it really shining in the search results. I'm cutting that in half and I'm going to do these half price, $37.50, $37.50. So that's what, a tenth of the price of those websites? And I'm going to throw in my gig winners demo creation course, free. That's a video course. That includes comments from five of the nation's top voiceover people uh, that make demos, like uh, Bill DeWeese and Mark Grau. I really don't mind kind of giving the store away on this. I'm thinking long haul. If I can get a lot of people to order at this price, Fiverr's going to take notice of the activity, and I'll guarantee you right now, this is even before the, <laughs> before the promotion's even begun, that that gig is going to go right to the front page, page one, and maybe to the first position, and very possibly become Fiverr's choice in an incredibly short period of time. Uh, you can hold me to this. <laughs> you can get after me in the comments or whatever if I don't succeed at this, but I'm going to predict that in advance. And actually, the promotion for this doesn't even start until June, so I'm kind of letting you guys sneak in under the wire here on this thing. And I've decided to do one more thing just for fun while we're at it here. If you follow the link in the show notes from today and you hit the contact me button over at Fiverr, you know, you go to my gig and hit contact me. Even if you don't order a video demo from me, if you just say hi and mention the book, I'm going to send you my 12 pro tips to help you grow as a voice actor book for free. So there you go. What's your reaction to the tips today? For kicks, uh, maybe I can have you comment with guilty if your demo has one or more of the problems I mentioned today, no judgment on anybody's part here, just for fun, shows you stuck with me till the end and that you learned something helpful. Please also like and subscribe. And uh, coming up here in the next few seconds, I'll have links to a couple more cool videos that uh, I think you might be interested in. And uh, so keep watching for those and I'll catch you next time. The Geek Doctor.